Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to look at the key difference between a fixed and a floating exchange rate. In truth I've already covered a floating exchange rate in one of my previous videos. I've looked at the idea of an exchange rate being determined purely by the forces of demand and supply for that given currency with no government manipulation at all. And I've, uh, I explained the factors that would increase demand and therefore appreciate a currency and factors that would increase supply and therefore depreciate, depreciate a currency. So if you don't understand what a floating exchange rate is and what determines the value of a floating exchange rate, watch my previous video. In this video, I'm just going to focus purely on a fixed exchange rate and what that is, how that differs from a floating exchange rate and how a fixed exchange rate can be maintained. First of all, for a fixed exchange rate to be maintained, uh, for it to actually work, the government or the central bank, whoever is in charge of uh, maintaining the fixed exchange rate, needs to hold large amounts of domestic currency reserves but also foreign currency reserves to manipulate demand and supply of the domestic currency. Let's look at two markets here. Let's take the pound exchange rate in dollars. And let's just say, theoretically, assumption based, that the pound is fixed. The government has decided to adopt a fixed exchange rate for the pound. It's not in reality, but let's say, going back to the 1970s when it was fixed to the dollar, let's say that the fixed exchange rate is one pound to one dollar fifty. All right. Um, in this, on the left hand side here in this market, currently the equilibrium being shown is one pound is equal to one dollar sixty, an overvalued pound, a pound that's stronger than what it needs to be according to the fixed exchange rate. So what does the government or the central bank need to do? Well, very simply, it needs to sell the pound. It needs to use the currency reserves it's got, sell the pound currency reserves it's holding on, and buy up foreign currency instead. That will increase the supply of the pound, Shifting supply of the pound to the right, reducing the exchange rate from P1 to P2. And hopefully P2 now, the reduced value of the pound exchange rate, should equal $1.50. One pound to $1.50. So that's what a government or authorities can do if they fear that the exchange rate is going to rise or that the exchange rate is already rising when there is a fixed exchange rate. So that's how you can reduce the value of the exchange rate when there is pressure on it rising. What about on the right here? Again, let's say the initial equilibrium is showing an exchange rate of the pound where one pound can buy $1.60. Let's say, however, the fixed exchange rate is actually higher than that. So at the moment, the pound is, is undervalued, it's depreciated compared to the fixed exchange rate. Well, uh, what actually uh, needs to happen in this market to push up the value of the exchange rate? Well, the governments need to get involved, or the authorities need to get involved, and increase demand for the currency, demand for the pound. How can they do that? Well, very simply, they can use their foreign currency reserves to buy up more of the pound in the market. That will increase demand for the pound, shifting demand to the right, increasing the value of the pound to P2. And that increased exchange rate should hopefully now equal one pound is $1.70. That's the idea here. So if the pound is uh, under pressure, uh, rising pressure needs to fall in value, then increase the supply of it, sell pound currency reserves. But if it's under uh, falling pressure and it needs to actually rise, then, uh, then use foreign currency to buy up the pound, increasing demand for the pound in that sense. Okay. Um, uh, fixed exchange rates can also change. So I've assumed on the left that the fixed exchange rate is one pound equals one dollar fifty. If the UK government decides that it wants to change the fixed exchange rate, it can decide to. It can devalue the currency, make it instead one pound equals one dollar forty as the fixed exchange rate, lowering the value of the pound. Maybe it wants to do that to improve trade performance, in which case it can devalue the currency. Note that that's a very different word to depreciation. Depreciation is when the floating exchange rate uh, falls in value, or when the uh, floating uh, or appreciation to when the floating exchange rate actually goes up in value. When we talk about a fixed exchange rate, we talk about the fixed exchange rate either devaluing or revaluing. If it revalues, it goes up. If it devalues, it goes down. Okay? And uh, so if it actually revalues, if it goes up, maybe that's the fight against higher inflation. Who knows why? Uh, a government might want to revalue a currency. Alright, so that's the key difference between a fixed and a floating exchange rate. In a fixed exchange rate, Government intervention is necessary to keep the fixed value. In a floating exchange rate, no government intervention at all. The key thing for a fixed exchange rate to work is to have lots of currency reserves. In theory, another way to maintain an exchange rate is to actually manipulate interest rates, but that's not as direct. So in theory, 
if uh, a central bank or government wanted to reduce the value of an exchange rate, they could lower interest rates, um, which would increase supply of the currency and reduce the value of it. And if they wanted to increase the value of the exchange rate, it could simply increase interest rates, increasing demand for the currency. But the problem with interest rates is, one, it's not a direct way of increasing or decreasing the exchange rate. And two, the major side effects in the economy can be disastrous, can go against the intentions of the exchange rate policy in the first place. So what you tend to see is less interest rate management to maintain a fixed exchange rate, although in theory it could happen. You tend to see more buying and selling of currency using currency reserves to increase the value of the exchange rate or to decrease the value of the exchange rate. Thanks very much for watching, guys. See you next time.